Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we are going to talk about lenses and I have a couple of few here, could add a couple more. But yeah, I want to talk about lenses right now, um, pretty easy and understandable. I'm not going to get very technical here or too technical. I have another video just on um, focal length itself, but I'm going to try and uh, explain to you what all this stuff means. So first things first, let's check the definition of what a camera lens actually is. A camera lens is a crucial component in photography that focuses light onto the camera's image sensor or film to create an image eventually. So that's really, really simplified. It consists of several physical lenses like optics and it is an optical device with one or more glass elements arranged in a specific configuration together and bend light rays. So lenses come in various focal length with different possible apertures and designs and each serving a different purpose in photography. And that's really, really important and that's what we're going to dive into now uh, on a really beginners and entry level, easy and understandable for everyone. We take one by one. Uh, I have a couple uh, of prime lenses here. I have a couple of zoom lenses here. I have a big tele zoom lens here. And yeah, let's talk lenses. We have different types of lenses. We have prime lenses. A prime lens is known as a fixed focal length. It's a type of camera lens with a single fixed focal length. Prime lenses have a fixed perspective and cannot zoom in or zoom out and usually have a big um, aperture. Zoom lens. A zoom lens offers variable focal length within a single lens, allowing the photographer to zoom in or zoom out. And zoom lenses are characterized by a range of focal lengths, such as 24 to 70 or 70 to 200, for example, indicating the lens's ability to cover a spectrum of focal length. They are usually bigger and heavier also. Then we have macro lenses. A macro lens is a specialized lens extremely like designed for extremely close-up photography, for example, animals or flowers or such. And these lenses are, yeah, they are designed to focus sharply on subjects as close range to even uh, display them at one-to-one -one ratio, even higher. So um, yeah, you can reveal fine details that may not be visible to the naked eye. You can also use them for normal photography, but they have an own look to them. So I will take this uh, Nikkor lens 100 to 400 as a reference material to show you what I mean. Every lens has basically the same basic informations on them. Some lenses have more buttons, some lenses have more information and depending on the manufacturer these informations can have different formatting. So first of all and the most important thing on every lens is um, these numbers. These represent the focal length I've made a video on focal length itself, so it determines basically uh, the minimum is 100 millimeters and the maximum is 400. On some manufacturers you might have a millimeter next to it, on Nikkor you usually have just the numbers. So this is an indicator that the range of this lens goes from 100 to 400 millimeters. So this is called telezoom, right? Next we have the aperture, which is a 4.5 to a 5.6. So here, for example, it's only one aperture number as well as on this lens, 2.8 or on the prime. If you have a prime lens, like a lens which has a fixed focal length, like not a zoom lens, you have only one millimeter number and one aperture number. There can be zoom lenses with only one aperture number. These are the more expensive ones. Or if it's a really big zoom, you will have two numbers anyway. Um, usually there's differences between that, but we will come to that in other videos. Right now, just the basics. So this is the focal length. It also determines basically the amount of uh, what kind of zoom you have. You can just divide the bigger number by the smaller number, 400 divided by 100 is four, so you have a four times zoom here, ranging from 100 to 400 millimeters. The second number is the aperture, which is the best possible aperture at the given focal length. Here we have two numbers. So the first number is the indicator for the best possible ap aperture on the first number in the focal length. And the second one is 
a 5.6 related to the big it's the best possible ap aperture for the longest focal length the s itself can also be a d or an lg or whatever every manufacturer has own wordings and own um, signature marks so the s line is the superior line of the z nikkor lenses you have uh, ed g whatsoever each manufacturer has an own catalog of <laughs> of uh, letters which mean different th things so and um, yeah there is no industry standard so these are the most important ones as i said summarizing focal length and best possible aperture at given focal length it can be one aperture or a range of ap apertures and so then we have the bayonet clockwise counterclockwise so uh, clockwise you open it counterclockwise you close it and you see here it's basically the contact to fit it on your camera body each camera body has or type of camera body has an own bayonet so always make sure the lens you buy fits the bayonet of your body there are adapters however like this one but yeah that's a bayonet always keep this clean and you can actually take a look into the lens I can take off and then you can let me check if we can look through it a bit of space here uh, it's pretty dark so you won't see a lot there you see a small dot at the end always keep this closed and don't let it be dirty second thing a thing is we have the the aperture ring where you can actually manually influence the aperture not every camera has it here a and m stands for automatic focus and manual focus you can basically switch around with this thing and we want to get full range or two three meters these are focus related buttons usually only have a and m these white dots here and there are to match your camera body or to match your tripod this lens because it's really heavy has its own tripod so you can lose it and the white dots represent the natural like the natural position so here is a focus ring aperture here is focus so you can manually switch the focus then we have on zoom lenses the focal length and now you can actually change the focal length with this what you see here is a sun blocker that prevents light from coming from the side to avoid possible oops light effects on here all of these small buttons here are basically programmer buttons so you can actually do some programming on them they are macro keys like on a gaming <laughs> gaming keyboard for example so you can put macros on here so in your camera settings you can tell the camera okay lfn1 and 2 uh, means maybe switch white balance or switch to whatever you can do settings which would normally require you to go through the camera menu you can put those comments here commands we have a display not every lens has a display i'm going to show you that later and that's basically it on here it tells you all the numbers again so we have a nikkor manufacturer is nikon nikkor type lenses for z mounts this is the bayonet and the set line then with the focal length we have the actual apertures best possible apertures at given focal length vr s these are manufacturer specific keys so with each letter you can tell uh, what it is i will post a link for each manufacturer so you get an overview view what it means s is another letter as i said it's um the S line and the diameter which you will need for lens caps and filters so this is basically a zoom lens and that's it simple as that so these are the parameters you will find on every lens in a kind of different manner but um, that's the most basic things uh, this is the classical what we call kit lens actually this is a zoom lens <laughs> why do you call it kit lens um we'll come to this numbers in a minute 
Kit lenses are usually what you can buy with a camera body, such as this one or this one here, the Z mirrorless series and old DSLR, D300, great camera, both great. Um, when you buy those camera bodies, they usually come in a package with a lens. It will not be a lens like this, usually, for the semi-professional area. This lens is really expensive compared to this lens. Lenses have different kind of quality. A kit lens usually comes with a camera body and it's a pretty good all-round lens. It's not a super highly high-end professional lens. It is a semi-professional lens. Usually all DSLRs and mirrorless cameras could be called semi-professional right now. But um, these kit lenses have usually, they are a really, really good compromise between cost and efficiency. So yeah, this is a kit lens from the Nikon Z6, which I bought a couple of years ago. In this case, no matter if we are on a 24 or on a 70 or on a 50 or on a 35, we have a 4 as an aperture, the best possible aperture. So uh, the smaller the number here, the better. That you only have one number is actually a really good sign on the zoom lens because it means the aperture is actually always the same. If we take my big lens here, which was a lot more expensive than the lens you just saw, it has two numbers. Uh, I have a 4.5 as the best possible aperture and on 400, which is the largest number, I have a 5.6. It is really, for such a big lens, it's pretty good. This lens is like 2.5K in euros, uh, if you buy it. So there might be a lens which has 400 mils and 4. Point, or maybe let's let's take it otherwise. You have a 100 to 400 with 2.8. That would be a lot more expensive. Why? So usually when you have different focal length or zoom lens, it's actually a mechanical process. So... Um, the lens actually grows, right? So I'm going from a 400 to 100 here. And there are a lot of moving parts in here. And if you have uh, one aperture for the whole range of your focal length, it's actually really hard to do and it's really expensive to create that. So uh, usually on, not, on the most kit lenses, you will have a different aperture on zoom lenses. So other than that, we have this old Nikon Nikkor. I think it's from, the, well, maybe it's not older than I am, but. No, I checked. It's uh, from 1994. So um, it's old, but gold. And I can still use it on my Nikon Z mirrorless camera. Here as well, um, it's a bit more old school and a bit more visual. So uh, just to give you an idea. First of all, um, do not wonder, this is a lens adapter. Um, to put it on my new camera. So okay, I can unlock it. Usually adapters as well as the camera has a, they have a release button. And then you can usually counterclockwise um, unlock it. Or clockwise. Um, if you pull clockwise, you unlock it. Counterclockwise, you close it. So um, here you have um, basically an FTZ adapter. No matter the manufacturer, you will have different adapters to use old lenses on new models. So um, this lens is old and still can be used. And here you have a white dot as well as you see, and you have that on your camera as well. It's just easier to show it with the adapter. So um, here it's a bit different. Here it's this, you see. So this is coherent with that. Uh, I could make a difference here. This is also a, um, a lens from another series, from a non full frame series. So uh, you have the dot here. Always search for the white dot, at least on Nikon cameras. And you see already it's in counterclockwise and it's locked. And now you can use it on the new camera. So here you have a small display and it tells you in meters and in feet at what kind of focus distance you are. And here you're on infinite. On the old lens, it looks a bit different. Um, here you could pull the aperture 1.8 to 16 and you can actually lock it but that's it and you have the same focus ring here this is a focus ring basically you have that on every lens 
and as well meters feet. This lens is a lot larger. It has more buttons and it has an own tripod, right? So usually on the camera, you see it here. This is the tripod plate. Usually you would put it on, um, on the camera itself here, but since the lens is so heavy, if you put it here, your tripod might be going, or your camera might be going like this. So um, you can actually use this to outbalance your camera. Um, larger lenses and heavier lenses will have it. And as I said, these are to extend the focal length and this will have an effect on your um, viewable area. You can watch my video on focal length in this regard. And I'm gonna turn the camera on. And when older lenses actually had no digital functions or processors, um, some newer lenses even have a motor in them and such. So um, here's a display and it will tell me now on which focal length I am digitally to be very, very precisely. If I put display again, I can even go on which aperture I am. So I don't know if I can, uh, let me check, yeah. So here it tells me the aperture. It's actually giving me the information digitally. So that can help in some special circumstances. So we can see actually here, I'm on 200. So the best I can go on the 200 is uh, five. If I'm going on the 100, I'm can, I can go 4.5. Do you see that? Perfect. And if I go up, it will immediately increase uh, automatically. So that was it for the specification of lenses. You should always try to get um, really, really used to your lenses and um, always protect them. Don't store them in a dark, uh, moisty room. So um, these are your tools of trade and usually they do not lose any quality. I don't know about the newer ones. Um, the old ones actually are purely mechanical and they can work and do not lose any quality for 30 years. They do not lose image quality, which is crazy. It is a good thing because it's purely mechanical, it's optics, it's glass, and once you treat it well, you can actually have it for a very, very, very long time. So yeah, before we summarize everything, I wanna tell you one more thing, and this is how you can calculate your zoom. There's a zoom factor, which means basically how much times you can zoom in. This is often asked <laughs> if you sell cameras, for example, what kind of zoom it is, or uh, you might wanna know on yourself. Um, so. Based on your focal length, you can actually calculate the zoom factor you have. And you can simply do that by taking, dividing the longest focal length available by the shortest focal length available. And then um, you have two numbers, you can divide them. And here are some examples. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. So on a 100 to 400, which I just had in my hands, you divide 400, which is a longer focal length, by 100 and you get a four right? Four times 100 is 400. So you have a four times zoom within the range of 400 or with the range of 400 to 100, 100 to 400. Same counts for 25 to 75, uh, 75 divided by 25 or three, but 600 divided by 200, for example, is three as well. So it's both a three times zoom, but with a different kind of range. So yeah, that's simply it. Here are a couple of other uh, examples you can look at, but that's pretty much it. Now let's summarize what we've learned. I've explained everything in a really, really basic manner. Um, I sometimes sacrifice technological accuracy for the matter of, for the fact of, for the purpose of understanding it a bit better for beginners. So we can get uh, a lot more technical later on, but now we are here for starters. For lens marking, we have focal length displayed in millimeters. Usually it is measured in millimeters. So whether you have it on your lens or not, depends on the manufacturer on the lens itself, but either you have 24 to 70 or 24 to 70 millimeters on it, that's a basic information which is required. Then we have the best possible aperture at given focal length. When you have a zoom lens, the first number is for the first and the second number is for the second focal length in regard of the aperture. More expensive lenses might only have one aperture number. Then you have the focus distance and the small um, display with it, analog or digital for it, um, which is minimum to infinity and you have usually feet and meters displayed there. 
so they don't have to make two lenses for metric and non-metric systems. Then in regard to the lens quality, manufacturers have different letter keys to give info on the quality or special specifications of the lens. So what kind of glass, does it have an extra motor, or is it super high quality or whatsoever. Each manufacturer has own letter codings, as you will. And there is no industry strand, uh, there is no industry standard, so you can look that up on the manufacturer's webpage usually. Then we have the lens and bayonet, which are more like hardware to it. There is a focus ring where you can manually focus and the focus switch where you can immediately switch from auto to manual and back. We have the focal length ring, as I would call it now, where you can actually zoom in, zoom out. It's not the correct name, but in a matter of understanding, it's easier. Then we have a display on some cameras, which is proactively changeable, basically. So you can display focal length and aperture, as you saw on my, uh, on my telezoom but it's optional, it's not like mandatory and you will not have it on every lens. As well as programmable buttons, for example. Uh, so macro buttons, you can program them, as I, as I told, and these are optional as well. You won't find that on cheap lenses. And they do not impact image quality at all. Then we have the bayonet and the top bayonet. The top bayonet is basically really, really small, barely seeable. It's for the tip and for adding filters. And the bayonet down is the connector to your to your camera body, which is really, really important because the bayonet type is not displayed on the... Sometimes it's Nikkor Z and you can tell it's a Nikkor Z lens, but sometimes it's like APS-C, for example, is on there as well, I think. On older lenses, you won't find that information, so it's not mandatory. Always check because uh, they have to be compatible. Um, being from the same manufacturer is no guarantee that your lens will work on your body. That is in regard to APS-C, to full frame or um, mirrorless or whatsoever. So there are adapters, as I showed you, but sometimes they are not. So usually for the same manufacturers, you will have an adapter to use all the other lenses, but you certainly cannot switch. You cannot put a Canon lens on a Nikon lens with a reg regular adapter. So always make sure your bayonet is appropriate to your body so that you can use a lens or you need an adapter. Bayonets, really, really um, important because it also is a technical uh, note between your body and your lens. So all the information about the, the controlling, etc. PP always goes through the bayonet. So keep it clean. Keep your whole lens clean. Uh, like my lenses, for example, are a bit dusty right now because I came from a long trip and put them in the basement. But uh, I will clean them and you should do that. And if you don't know how to do it, do it in a professional store. But um, yeah, don't get them dirty. You know, research a bit on how to, how to, um, how to put them away because they can actually build, um, you can actually damage them or they build fungal infections or so on. And it, um, I'm going to go into that in other videos, but that's it for now. Also, I don't know if I mentioned, um, obviously using an adapter might have different effects. So good adapters don't have too much effects, but you can get crop factors using old, um, you know, using different um, lenses on different bodies with adapters. So you can get crops or you can lose a bit of sharpness or if you use a teleconverter, you can lose one or two apertures and so on. But um, that's that's a lot deeper now. That's nothing for, for this video. So that's it. We will go to all that other stuff in other videos. I hope you liked it. I hope it was helpful for you as a beginner. If so, please leave a comment and subscribe or ask me anything. Also, make sure to join the Discord. I'm trying to build a helpful community for everyone. So I will also put the PDFs and slides over there. And yeah, if you liked it, make sure to like and subscribe, share. It would really help. If you didn't, make sure to let me know why and what I could, could I improve. Uh, English is my third language almost, so second, third language. And uh, yeah, I hope I'm pretty precise in what I'm saying. If you have any questions open, please don't hesitate to ask me. And uh, anyway, that's it for now. And whatever time of the day it is for you, I wish you a great day and the rest of the day or whatever it is, go take a camera and take some great pictures. Thanks for watching.